BC today, this Wednesday, March the 13th. And it's great to be with you here um, on a somewhat quiet day, really, in markets. We had a nice up day yesterday. Really, it was a technology rally yesterday, and we gave a little bit of that back, at least on a relative sector basis. Technology was down about a percent or so on the day. Uh, the NASDAQ itself was down about 0.54%, about half of a percent for the day. The Dow still eked out a gain of about 37 points. So a little bit mixed um, on the day, which is normal. Um, there wasn't a ton of economic news today. I wrote about that yesterday. Today was sort of a quiet calendar in the economic front, uh, but there's plenty to go through tomorrow. And, and there's still plenty today, really, um, just not, <laughs> not economic numbers, which some of you may like and some of you may may, may not. But um, the uh, WTI was up to almost 3% today, a little less, 2.8% on a, a Ukrainian uh, strike on a Russian refinery, uh, Rosneft, um, that uh, caused some turmoil in energy markets a little bit. And then you had a drawdown from the government on inventories in the U.S. of about a million and a half uh, barrels. So WTI was up. Uh, both of those things take supply off offline or indicative of supply being utilized. Um, and so oil, oil prices rallied a little bit on the day. Um, there has been a lot of talk really about the amount of cash that's on the sidelines and there's been a lot of media about it and you know there's about 18 plus trillion dollars sitting in cash a lot of that came uh, because of higher interest rates people looking for cash as an actual asset class that gives you a, a positive real rate of return uh, which is which is nice for a change after many years of, of it otherwise but it's just interesting to me when i sort of peeled back the onion a little bit more the um yeah cash has gone so if you looked at pre pre pandemic 2019 we were at about 13 trillion in cash uh in the country and now we're at about 18 trillion so that's a 35 percent increase um over a course of a short period of time so totally get why it's in the media um but if you look at total um you know household net worth for example so if you divided what 13 was by household network in 2019 and then you divide uh, what it is now, which is 18 trillion in cash by total household net worth. Household net worth has gone up about the same, not quite 35%, but it's up about 32%. So that's good news. People are worth more in the country. The, the country's wealthier. That's that's not a bad thing. Um, but just the percentage of it being in cash is the same. It's basically 10%. So I, I don't think that there's a, 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 some other um, secret to discover with some large amount of cash that's going to come out of money markets and into stocks or something like that. Sure, that can happen. But uh, just remember that the percentage of cash is, the, is about the same. Um, and um, over that period of time, there, look, there was a little bit, when you look at charts, when you look at trend lines of, for example, net net household net worth, so re, you know adjusted for inflation, there is a, a pop there right around 2021, 2022, from transfer payments from governments, basically, and then markets really rebounding after after the pandemic, both real estate, but also stocks too. And so that you had that sort of run up and that led it to some of that inflation. That has now come back to trend line. So, the, you know, what I wrote was it's been quite a ride, but if you look at um, uh, those numbers going up about 30 to 35%, consumer spending also went up about the same and then inflation adjusted. We're back on the trend of where we were before it all started. Um, not necessarily an economic, uh, uh, point for the day, but, uh, Trump did clinch the Republican, um, nomination. So we've got another rematch or a rematch, sorry, between Biden and Trump, uh, for the election in November. And it's not new. We've had seven other rematches in, in presidential history before, but the last one was 68 years ago in 1956 with Eisenhower and basically the other guy that probably nobody's heard of, who is Stevenson, or most people have it. Um, so it's been a long time. So this is obviously going to get a whole lot of media attention, particularly because the majority on both parties, Republicans and Democrats, would have preferred a different candidate, uh, at least judged by polling. Um, so yeah, I think this one will be uh, one, one, for, uh, one, one for the memory banks here as we go through the rest of the year. And then I'm sure Media will cover it. Saturday Night Live will probably have stuff on it as they do, which is which is always fun. But anyways, um, the um, uh, question today that I got um, earlier was about 
having a low interest rate on a mortgage on the, on your primary residence because it's so low. Um, so long as the bank would let you extend an additional amount of borrowing at the same low rate. Um, I'm not aware of that being something that is out there a whole lot. But the question was, if it were, wouldn't it be better to take that at a low interest rate of, say, two and a quarter and just park it in cash at 5% and earn the interest rate arbitrage on the two? Um, I think that those things are fine. I don't think that it's needed on a primary residence if there isn't some sort of financial stress or some reason for it. So I'm not, I'm not keen on it at all. I think that uh, people should live in their houses and enjoy them and not use them as ATM machines um, from time to time, even when the numbers seem almost too good to be true. Remember, cash uh, yields will go lower here over time, number one, and often is a human nature, um, money that is taken out that is seeming uh, uh, in excess of liquidity may get used for other things at some point. And so I just don't want to see people extend on their primary residence for without a real financial reasons to do it. Um, with that, tomorrow we've got retail sales, we've got initial jobless claims, and then more importantly, we have the PPI data. Uh, so some more inflation read that we can take a look at uh, with you tomorrow. So with that, I will let you go for the evening. It's good as always to be with you. Reach out with questions. I do enjoy them. Thank you. Mm -hmm.